Good morning. Hi, Aiden. How are you doing? Hello. Hey, hey. Good morning. Hey, Hayden. How are we doing? Real good? Pretty good. That's good. Alrighty. Hey, Marin. How are you? Cool. It's, it's FOMC day today, so crazy stuff happens. What's going on over here? Yep. Cool. Alrighty. Um, so what we can see, we can see um, that there has been a trade already. Has been a trade. I'll go. Uh, we'll do this quickly, and then we'll talk about it. Um, so we've got the French bank holiday. So I'm expecting a little bit less volatility to come at this um, at this open. Plus, we've got the FOMC later on today, and usually trading conditions are pretty bad when we've got FOMC in terms of like usual volume. So I'm not surprised that there was a volume kick about an hour ago, which has kind of been similar this whole week. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking there's a little bit more of a disconnect between the Tokyo close pre-London, so we're getting a little bit of a burst early rather than sort of being like Tokyo closing, German opening more or less at the same time. Now there's that actual distinct hour difference. So we are seeing, um, we are, there, there has been a little, little change in conditions, nothing that was not, nothing drastic, just there has been a little change and that's that early, early volume push for this week. I'm sure it will settle down and fall into a more normal pattern. Hey George, Marion, how are you? Um, so we be careful because we do the French holiday. We do have a lot of news, a lot of news today. So I don't expect there to be, um, I expect it to be thinner conditions. So thin conditions can still mean really good movement uh, because it takes less volume to move in a thinner market. But then there also might be a bit of a hesitancy for big boys to really commit to a, to a direction. So we can get a little bit of chop or subdued moves. I'm thinking, um, I'm actually thinking power might come out a bit more hawkish than we're really expecting. So I wouldn't be, they're gonna hold. I'm pretty sh certain that they're not gonna be raising rates, but it's all about the press conference, all about the statement that they make. Hey Glenn, uh, hey Debbie, hey Jim. Um, so I'm pretty sure that in the FOMC statement or the conference rather, um, what they're gonna say is um, probably the exact same that he said last two meetings leaving the door open for future rate hikes, but I think you might actually lean into the hawkish side, just a little bit more, maybe a couple of words here and there, a bit different. Um, so, but you know, I don't wanna try to predict the news too much and I don't wanna let it affect the London Open. We're still gonna go for the same sort of move, judging how this 30 minute candle is gonna close, et cetera, like that, blah, blah, blah. We've got PMI, we've got jobs opening, okay? I don't think that's gonna really affect um, this is coming out after after NYSE. Just be note the time change that this is in London time, and because London changed their clocks uh, on the weekend just gone, New York will change their clocks next weekend. So there is only a four-hour London Open before the American session comes in. What comes online? Hey, Rob. Um, all right, where's that audio coming from? Oh, hey, good morning from me. Hey, Dave. How are you, mate? It'll be in for the first hour, then i got to go to a function, but we'll see how we go. Okay, let's hope that's a good hour. Um, all right, so then financial juice, having a look at that. We, um, a little bit of backlash coming from this um, this latest Israel strike. That one, that one might get a, th a few things moving in Iran and Turkey. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, see if our headlines come. At the moment, it's too early for the media. Japan are threatening, you know, after doing nothing, and then really just their currency hitting like, you know, multi-decade lows. Now, you know, maybe they, they have backtracked before, backtracked, a uh, backtrack, <laughs> reverse the truck. Um, so we may not confirm intervention even after intervening. This guy, this guy, Kanda, I've seen reports where he says, we will not intervene in the market. And 15 minutes later, we have intervened in the market. So don't trust this guy. This guy doesn't, you can't trust a word he says. Um, other than that, you know, it's just a normal FOMC day. 
so let's have a look at the chart where was the move the move was i haven't touched a thing i haven't touched a thing i actually have touched a thing i put i put in a new idea um above here but all of this this is the exact same from yesterday so the move already this morning was a, like we we accurately predicted that this area right here you're going to get a lovely reaction that was in the trade breakdown if you want to go check that out um the london open move initially for yesterday was just this little um like 30 pip push hopefully we're hoping to get more to retest these lows um but it came back didn't take any of the buys waited for the high quality zone which was this line here this line if we go over to the left we know what that is now that's the um that's the 30 minute candle let just enlarge this up a bit that's this that's this 30 minute 30 minute imbalance candle right here so that was coinciding with new york comics open commodity exchange open we get a little bit of volume push not always on indices not really reflected in indices but when you've got a euro session that was really bullish london session that finally made 100 pips so got to the range then new york often will test the high break the high but won't buy the high so that will be a little buy to sell and then a sell to buy so there was a nice 50 pip move right off that level right off that level beautiful then um the area on question was this this zone this blue zone just people that didn't watch uh yesterday that zone was taken on the uh weekly it was the distance between all of these little wicks weekly and daily look at these wick rejections all these wick rejections inside of this area so really nice sensitive zone you can see a little bit even more detail if we go to the daily okay if we go to the daily we can see even more rejections okay wick here wick here wick here wick here wick here a couple of little closing prices inside of it a little stall in price here like wicks up rejects closed inside of a wick down that's like that three candle rule where you got like three three wicks in the same area okay and then we've got more wicks and more activity so really lovely area to be looking for things uh looking for trade opportunities now once we broke above these wicks we had clean candle clean candles to the left so clean candles nice and easily seen on the one hour that once we can break above it we've just got one little wick to fill taking the second break above that zone you can get a fairly easy push straight up to that green area only problem was that it happened really early so even i wasn't able to catch a lot of that i did get to the charts um about 40 minutes ago so i was able to take it on when price we were breaking above here and then as we came down i managed to get into the trade about this candle which is lining up with when i was getting to the charts about 6:45. yeah that's about right um yeah and then price pushed up don't hold all the way you know to the zone that's only one and a half pips away just you know make sure that you know these early moves you've got to take partials or, or full profit don't don't expect like miracles to happen in any entries that are here um hey life in pakistan hey zia uh, any live trade setup going on uh there was a trade earlier right so that was the setup now we know this time anyone that's been watching for a while this is the this is the candle we want to we want to focus on this current candle this live candle we want to focus on what this guy's going to do it's going to be our most important little bit of information for the first 20 minutes of london um alrighty, so what does this what are we looking like we've got a little bit of an imbalance we've got a little bit of an about five minute imbalance down here that we need to take looks like we're going to come down to it again damn it it's really hoping that it could like close somewhere up here so that we've got a five minute imbalance we've got a 10 minute imbalance this is pre frankfurt open okay and then we've got i like this zone i do have my eye set on this area because it was like in the Asian session, the 50% of Asian holding as a little resistance, then we broke above, then we came down, finally broke above it, holding that support, little double bottom, little liquidity candle. 
at this point. So we've got structure, we've got double bottom, and we've got Asian 50%. So there's a lovely little bit of liquidity sitting over here. Um, then we've got the 45 minute and one hour Asian low, which was a doji low in itself. So we can come back and sweep this whole area if we really want to. Um, this candle here, H1, 45 minute. This is the one right there. So maybe we can take this out because we kind of did that, the easy move already, which is a bit crappy. Um, the other idea I've got is if we can, I drew this right at the start as well, that if we were getting the really strong 30 minute candle from London, this is a pretty difficult area to tackle buying into this zone. And I really don't want to be buying. I don't want to be entering buys in, in this area. But once we can clear these wicks, I think it will be a little bit bumpy above here, but it might break, little break, thinking that you're in clear traffic then, then we might get a quite a quite a significant pullback. But then if we can push up and start getting into this clear zone, you've got so that you've got an easy range to fill. So that I'm really looking for this to be like a little buy zone here, or this a buy zone up here if we can get above this area. But that's a pretty tall ask because that's gonna be like 80, 80 pips away already. So hopefully we can get a trade like somewhere low to push that direction or up here into this area, price action, to look for it to come down and sweep all this liquidity that was left behind. That's, that move down is easier if we don't come down now and take some of this liquidity and making that move down more efficient. What else? What else? Oh, this this black box. Though this is not this is not month. We we do have a monthly close now that we can add. I haven't added that yet. But this black box. This is where I'm thinking this this whole idea for. Um, and that was based on structure. Okay, so let me look. Let me show you that. On the one hour, you've got a support. You've got a resistance. Price finally broke through it retested it twice so if it's retesting the third time and we can get, if all we need is a candle even on like the five minutes or 15 minutes closing inside of this structure to then say you know it's almost mandatory that we go to the top of that structure if we get a candle closed inside of here after testing it twice already um, so a bunch of ideas the only area that i say is really difficult to trade is if this london pre-london candle closes too low because I don't want to take sales into support and I don't want to take or if we push really high up here I don't want to take buys into resistance so they're the only two scenarios that I'm going to say you know what um, I'll just wait for these better better ideas to play out better better zones to be hit um, hi mate what pairs are they this is German 40 you see it right here in the center of the screen um, cool what do you guys think huh you guys, um, I've got some ideas as well on UK 100 and um, US CAD, but I'll talk to you, talk to my guys after the stream. So we'll go to nine o'clock for the YouTube trading up, guys. I'll we'll just try to get a trade and then we'll call it. Um, alrighty, so pretty healthy pullback, you know. Like just look at the th oh, that's two minute, look at the three minute, two minutes the same. But look at this structure. Isn't that just nice? Like this beautiful trending structure, price pushing up, coming back. Uh, not quite the 50%, price pushing up, nice deep pullback, creating that support, breaking back above, retesting the highs for this is New York session. Asian session, you know, part of the bigger pullback, okay? On like say the, maybe the 30 minute, one hour. Then we got the, the move, the healthy cycle starting to come up again. Price pushed up, came down, form structure. Price pushed up, came down, form structure. Price pushed up, second structure pulled back right now. So you got the first little support, you got the second support. Second structure is nice, is a nice area. But because we've got London Open coming in, in 10 minutes, it's safer to wait for this 30 minute candle to close. Um, there are lots of levels. We need to evaluate one by one and trade level by level, 100%. 100%, yeah. That's it, Maron. That's it. We just need to find a like time, regardless of time, this this closing up into this clean traffic here, this was the move. That was the move. So 
That was the move I was waiting for, so. So I wonder if we can generate liquidity here. If we look at like say 30 minutes, we've created, a, you know, this is, you've got a support and you've got the resistance forming if this candle can, can close like this, then um, I'd love it to like manipulate these imbalances with London. And then if we can start pushing back up again, if we're if I'm good enough, I'll try to get the very low of the wick. If I can't quite get that, I can't quite get that anticipation entry, I'll just have to go for a confirmation entry. And if we're pushing back above here, then I would say there's a huge chance we're going bullish. But what I'd have to anticipate, if this 30 minute closing bearish, there's gonna be some some push from London Open that to the downside. I need a don't try to get caught up trying to buy the low of a falling knife with London volume without strong confirmation. Because I can imagine, this is what I'm hoping that we get something like this, where this candle closes bearish, which will be this one here. And that we do get a nice push down. I don't really want to take the cells here. Not like maybe if it was a little bit higher, I could take the cells. Cause then it would give me you know, even to pre-frank, maybe 20 pips down to these these Asian 50%, percent that will be 38 pips. I'd like to see that. Then I would anticipate either if the volume's heavy and there's a lot of whipsaw, this is just gonna create a long bottom wick and then we go bullish like yesterday. And hopefully we can get the buy say somewhere in here or somewhere in here of this wick, anticipating this candle go bullish it's just I don't really, I don't really like um, countering this candle too much. But then the cells, the cells is, you know, I've just got to be honest with myself that there's not a whole lot of range to the downside that I feel comfortable selling into. But if this candle can close bearish and then the, f the first candle can wick up and retest this neckline and then hesitate and start to come down, maybe I can get in the trade somewhere here hopefully to push down to this pre-frank or asian 50 at least that way it's is opening up my range that i can get like 20 you know 26 pips potentially um french and italian bank holidays yeah there should be less volume with the french market italian not so much but the french market should decrease volume a little bit um yeah anyway them the ideas anyone got anything different or otherwise let's go to all chart view oh what's that mate i'm pretty no I've, I've, what you said then pretty much sums it up i've thrown a photo already up on the german channel oh yeah i'll have a look this is the wick area potentially five minute imbalance that just formed so maybe, um, maybe if this 30 minute candle down the bottom left over here, maybe it can use that imbalance candle, push down, maybe do something like, don't know how this 30 minute candle will close, but hopefully the high and low of this next 30 minute candle is here. The high and low reaches at least, at least here and at least here. Then that's giving you a a 35 pip candle. Hopefully it can push down all the way to here and be a 50 pip move. That'd be delicious. So four and a half minutes, pretty good chance now that this 30 minute candle is gonna close bearish. What's even better is if we close underneath this wick. If we close above this wick, I'm gonna say this is a rejection wick and I have to be super, super careful selling. Is everyone giving a like on the stream? That would really help. That'll, that that yeah. adds to our luck.
<laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, oh, German channel. So you've got... Um... Oh, you took the cell. Descend. Okay. Alrighty, so... It could be 50%. Mm -hmm. To the second structure. Mm. Lots of little, like you can see, you can see them balance on the one minute quite clearly. Or no, not the, not them balance rather. I'm going to change change that word. You can in this scenario, you can see, you can see where they, the the institutional selling came in to try to push price back down. No, no top wick, no top wick, no top wick, very small top wick. So this was their sell. Are they doing a sell to buy? That's the question. So I think if they're doing a sell to buy, then price should close above this little doji low because we can always take out the doji high then. Hopefully we can close underneath this doji. I don't, you can't sell the low. You can't sell breaking that low. You can't take breakout sales in this case without some pullback. Yeah. If you haven't, if you're trying to break, if you're trying to take that sell breakout on the very first break, look at, look, anything can happen. It could work out. But to me, that's pretty risky in terms of um, copping that whipsaw back up to these no wicks. If you um, add those two um, bullish half hour candles together and you look at the hourly chart, there's a decent few value gap to pull back down as well. Down over here, yeah. Yep. Yeah. With, with a pullback, that would be that would be excellent. Pullback first. Yep. Yeah, it'd be sick to get some buyers from down there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Wait for um, let it. I could I could imagine that the cells, if it is breaking down into that area, then because there is clean traffic along here, it will probably have to generate liquidity to push back up first rather than just doing a single sweep. So I think buyers, it might push up, think you're in a good position, come back to entry, push up, maybe sweep and then push up, something like that. Um, all right, so guns loaded. Now in about 30 seconds. Yeah, one minute. Oh, 60 seconds, sorry. Yeah, yeah. one more minute. Another trash day. In England, yep, everything's looks everything's the norm right now. Ah, oh, Grinch from Munich. Hey, Hunter. Thirty minutes looking like it's gonna close very nicely. So pull back to the imbalance, the structure. Start creating the top. Start drifting down, and then we start heading downtown for a short move secure with these with these ones first tw trades in 20 in the, in the first 20 minutes make sure make sure you take take some profit don't let don't let anything more than one to one um, become a losing trade oh hey Tom <laughs> you got it just made it mate there you go take out this imbalance come on a little push higher There is another imbalance under here, though, that I've just spotted. Picking up liquidity, and remember, like the imbalance, take the take the previous closing price if there's a little gap. Let's just build the fifteen minute fair value gap. Yeah. Okay. I might I might be missing this trade. I don't want to take that first Focus break. On that quick push up. Yeah, I, sp I spotted it too late, that imbalance, imbalance with the closing price. I had my eyes on a little bit higher for it to push up before dropping, so that was my mistake. Hopefully it can give me another test to get in. We're taking out this five minute imbalance, so now if we can just push up 
hopefully. <laughs> and then form a resistance to retest this low, then break it, then go lower. Or is it going to just be a quick clean drop? Ah, oh, yeah, bugger. I'll add this as the three minute imbalance previous candle close. Oh yeah, oh well. Yeah, bugger, I, I, um, I spotted it just, just a fraction too late between looking at this five minute, no wick. And then right then when it was testing it, no bottom wick, but use the previous candle close price. This is your little manipulation zone. You had to be super quick fingered or like for me to, I'm not going to, as soon as if I see something that I saw late, I'm not going to react too quickly on it, but that was a beautiful move. Beautiful move following the 30 minute candle wick up to improve your risk reward and bounce off a, a logical lower time frame area because you can't see these on the higher time frames and then just continue that 30 minute direction back down plenty of liquidity left behind plenty of um clean candles here as well really nice really nice price action despite not being able to despite me missing that sell i just love to see that Who did take that sell? Hey. Ivan, you got it as well? I'm in. Sarah's in, nice one. Yeah, I'm in. Very good, guys. Very good. Yeah, I did it from top. Oh, from top. Holy, nice to meet you. Yeah. Peter, you missed it. There was, yeah, I, that was uh, probably my mistake. Just not spotting that little zone just in time. close mine down at the Asian high yeah this is a smart place to like take take um take some profit it's it's still a bit early for a very bit now mm, 40 pips it's 40 pips you made 40 pips in less than oh wait you make sure you hold it over three minutes <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it don't count why three minutes apparently the rules you didn't get my TNCs I'll pass them on So this is a rejection area on the 30 minute. Yeah. So make sure book some profit. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I just hope, I hope for these longs that it's not going to be this V shape. I wanna see it, I wanna see a, um, a proper liquidity entry. Remember guys, the four types are entering. I wanna, I wanna see I'm probably going to I'm probably going to enter on a confirmation as well not even a not even anticipation but I want to see this candle form like this I want to see a little move away I want to see price form like a doji or something I want to see price break that doji low retesting this body that sorry this wick area if this candle closes bullish and then I want to see it respect the low and I want to see it start to flip bullish again and then I can execute on that for price to start pushing north again but the first domino to fall, this one, I prefer to take this in the three minute. I want this, it's got 20 seconds left. This one has to close bullish or has to close at least above this wick. Three, two, one. Okay. Little gap up. Nothing can, if anything breaks this low, then we're already, this idea is already cancelled. 
So just want something to move, a, show that there's buyers stepping in a little bit. Just want price to push up a little bit. On my terminal, the MetaTrader terminal, this is no bottom whip. And I think we actually touched it. Yeah, we touched it to the to the pip. Even though it's, the, it's still Pepperstone as well, the same feed. Oh no, it's ACAP on this one. That's right, it's the, it's the, it's the proper count. That's why there's difference. So Pepperstone has been a miss so far. Eight cap, It's this is no bottom wick and that's a perfect touch. Hey Beata, how are you? Okay, anything breaking that low? It's it's not, um we've got to wait for wait for a, the whole thing to start again. If we can respect the low, and we can see buyers starting to push in, then we can see that we've got the first sign of buyers stepping in. Then what we need to wait for is the retest. Then once we've got the retest, we need to see the retest holding to then start pushing back up. Maybe we can get then take out this five minute imbalance. It's got a little bit of weight involved now for this one. I will, I'll just, I'll happily just let this one, no, I won't be happily, but I'll let this one, if it just leaves like that, I won't enter on that one. That's not my, it's just not my style to enter on these V shapes. But they've been happening a lot. So probably a pretty good chance that it is gonna go without me. Oh, Joe, you got it as well. Awesome, mate. Well, you guys are done for the day, technically. Technically, I'm done for the day as well. For this little pre-London one. All right, well, we got the close we wanted. Little doji, beautiful. Another little gap up. Now, I'd prefer it to break the low before the high. But if it breaks the high before the low, it's it's not like we already did it, so it's no big deal, I guess. I did it on the one minute pain. The setup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one's lower than this one, so that's not the rejection yeah, candle for me. If that was the rejection on candle, then it did do it. Yeah, one looks a little bit different on my terminal. This candle looks a lot. That's a lot better. Oh, that one's fine. It's, that one's fine. It's just the first candle. Yeah, that one wicked below. It looks more like a doji on my terminal. Right, and two then minutes. Yeah, both those slows. Still might come back. Oh, actually, you're in it? Yeah. I don't want to take the one minute confirmation. I was looking for three minute minimum. I, I liked it because of where it happened, not so, so much what it did. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like this sign here is beautiful for me. Sorry, mate. That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on, it's on the 30 minute, looks even better. That whole area. Yeah, order correct. Um, get rid of that. Nice one, actually. You went here yesterday, mate. How'd you go on uh, gold yesterday? Yeah, it was a good, good one. I think some people even got like a sales from the uh, 2005. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the um, basically did the opposite of Monday. No, wait, Friday. Yeah, we it took out the previous daily high, and that's also the manipulation zone, like a HCL zone. Mm -hmm. So on daily, so it took out the high, and now we close bearish. So I think today we can just look for sell. Looking for this to do the retest still to go back up.
Well, I'm not going to enter on anticipation because I have been burnt with that one. So I'd rather it take out that low, but not take out this low. This this low has to hold. This low has to be tested. Or if this one's about to close, we could own, we only need to retest. We just need to retest the wick area. So if we can retest that, I don't really, I would prefer to take the flip. So my buy area would be roughly about this point. Then we've got um, about 40 odd pips. I think if we're pushing back up that way, I don't think this is gonna hold then. I think we can retest the, the high and probably this green section. So that would be exactly 50 pips. That'd be very good. So hopefully it just comes down. Not, not the moon yet. <laughs> Five minutes looks nice. Alright, I might just... If it's not coming down, I'm going to have to plan a late entry. Late entry would be if I think that there's no, not going to be any retest and then price pushes up, then I'm expecting it just to be a little shallow retest before continuing. So I don't want to take it as it's keep on printing new highs, but once it has broken something that I think would be suitable, then I'll probably only look for the shallow retest and then the same thing as it's looking to break there, then probably go up further. This, this late entry, unfortunately risk reward sucks, but looking for like 20 pips. Peter, you're in this long? Nice one, mate. Yeah. Oh, you got, where did you get in, Peter? Because you missed the, oh, you missed the sell. You're in the long. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Ping pong, huh? Very good. 15 minutes. Looking like it's going to close beautiful. Yeah. Got an 8.52. Nice. Yeah, this, I hate it when it does give me that little pullback because I most of the time will, I, stay true to my strategy and it doesn't give me the price set up but it didn't give me my entry ah oh, bugger now it's gonna take that five minute balance hard right, times you go in there that was nice one mate very good i think you'll get your retest now Aiden, after this 15 minute close i hope so So we're taking them balance now. So hopefully now the 15 minute, the 30 minute is gonna close as a mega one. Hopefully the 15 minute does that little shallow pullback and then drives higher. So 10, nine, eight seconds. This is a sell to buy. All right. Going to the wick fill straight away. Come on, give me a bottom wick. Yeah, stop loss of that break even. Nice, Peter. Give me the bottom wick. I can push back to 70. 14871. I think I'll give it a shot. I want to see this this lower wick start to slow down. Actually, I'm going to enter on that now, and then see if we can retest this high, which will be looking for this green zone, like the figure. So 
come on, just slow down a little bit. If we can start to leave that wick, it'd be very nice. Good one. Let's flip the lush. Risk reward is not very good where I've entered. Entered about here. Sixty three. Target something like that. A little bit below. Actually if we can push up into this zone. Maybe we can, or is this going to be a double, a double fake out? What I don't want to see is this closing too bearish because then I think that if, they, if we're getting close to this 30 minute candle closing then we can do the wick fill to the downside so I will manage my risk on this Hello? one hey hey mate Hi. oh that's actually it's on the phone yeah 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 I took it I took it as it's coming back down anticipating this would be like a bit of a shallow pullback but I hope we're just seeing it caught up in this whole whole mess Yeah, one is Maybe I should have waited for it to do the proper retest. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, I was hoping that I was um, I was did an anticipation for a shallow shallow pullback. The way that this candle was closing, I think it lured me in. And now we drive oh. higher. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh. Okay, this is the last roll here. I won't let it stop me out fully. It has to it has to turn around right now. Otherwise, this is looking. This candle lured me in. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this one out guys. We're gonna tighten it up. No, I don't like it. That bloody candle lured me in. I got in too too early for that one. I was expecting this 30 minute candle to keep on flipping up, but it came back and it bloody took the liquidity from this five minute imbalance and it was too strong. Too strong pullback, so I apologize about, about that. Double bottom, yeah. That fifteen. It's just that fifteen minute wick. Did the full wick fill. Wow. Yeah, should have stuck to my plan. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, so let's see if we can. Try to make that back. But I think now it's going to drive lower. And I can't take another trade now. Not for a little bit, need to watch this. Mm. 
Comes back to 793. All the way down here. Jeez. Hope not. Second structure in the 30 minute. Oh, I see what you're talking about. You know what's sick? Come down and take that euro note. Yeah. Taking it on my terminal. Just trying to suss out this movement. The 15 minutes actually quite a nice little zone for this uh, euro low. And we got the little doji from the previous 15 minute. So if we can actually start pushing up now, just had a little bit of early month whipsaw. This five minute can close bullish and then we get that push away. And then I'll look for this move to still play out, thinking that I just got faked out on this initial one. Aiden got a question for you on that um, that low mm -hmm. on the three minute and the five. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we go across to the first candle of the yep that one there. Mm -hmm. Now that's a liquidity candle, right? Yep. I would we then um, have a look at the wick of that and take that across to the right. Yeah. And where that uh, that low comes in is 50 percent mm -hmm. is that a legitimate thing or not to look for yeah it's the same as the 15 minute so it's the 15 minutes a better a better clue okay and we're retesting the low of this doji low so i'm watching very carefully to see how this one's going to close If we're breaking this low, I'm not looking for um, for buys for quite a while. But if we can respect this low, 
this is actually looking like a nice little you can, you can get like it's a it's a high it's a high risk reward setup if it works out stop loss is just underneath here It looks like there's a lot of momentum. Uh, you want to take the M3 and balance, not break the 15 minute. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm looking for is, is this the hold? And I don't want to take buys under here, but if we can start to break up above here again, then I'll look for this move to play out. So I just need this to hold. We left another little bit of imbalance, but we can come back and retest the close price of the previous candle. But if we can form that little support and start breaking some of these, we need to break these wick highs for any chance for that buying momentum to come back in. If we're breaking these lows, then there's got too much to wait for. At 8.36, buy limit. Ah, oh, not for me. If you want to take a anticipation, that would be like that's that's just too risky for me. Given the pressure from London coming down, I think that's I think you're just going to get stopped out easily. I think you for you're better off just you know wait until it's moving up, making higher lows again, breaking these resistances. Because see how we broke that low now, so there's there's no sales here. Let it start. Let it start forming supports and breaking resistances. Don't try catch a fallen knife here. Um, you're in shorts and pound US. Um, I haven't even looked at pound US, so I've got no thoughts on it. Yeah, sell extension. Yeah. So it looks like it's taken coming for the Asian low now. Makes sense. We haven't taken the Asian low once. Haven't taken the Asian low once. Oops. This week. Asian low pushed up. Asian low pushed up. Um, London fix at 14,808. Eh? That's London fix, is it? Catch it, Dave. Yeah, when when it when price has fallen like this, this London volume, you don't want to try catch it. Just wait, wait until you're on this side of the triangle, and then when you've got the right clues that the that the the knife has come has hit the ground, is when it's going to bounce, retest, and that retest should hold, not double bottom, but it should retest the low and hold, and then start breaking resistances then you can say you've got a good chance that you're on this side of the triangle and not trying to catch this fall in line. So we're taking Asian low now. So let's see if we can get this now. Oh, you're in the sales, Eddie. Nice one. Yeah, I would, that sell would have been the best one for me to follow that candle. Bloody hell. Oh well, price action was beautiful. It was right there. <laughs> it was absolutely right there. That was um, that was me not being good enough today. Yeah, that 15 minute threw that curve ball at me. Yeah, then I got FOMO because everyone was in the trade. So I was like, I don't want to miss out either. <laughs> Need to trust the pre-London pre information as opposed to what London throws at you in the first 15 minutes. That first 15 minutes London throws at you, 
is usually the manipulation. Now the sellers like are London is now connected. Yeah, there's your London London High right here. It'll be interesting if this holds. Now they've taken the Asian low. I want to see this five minute hold. 30 minutes just come to a close though. back above here that'd be absolutely beautiful Testing this little candle here. Um, what pairs? This is German forty, Dan. Uh, yeah, session trading is amazing. Uh, sell limit on what caused that higher time frame breaker structure downside. Uh, I'm not really looking for the sells. I really don't want to sell into this zone. It's the thing that I was point out um, at the start like trading inside of this blue zone to me is is pretty dangerous I don't want to flip my bias either it's just I wasn't looking once we broke it just because I'm not looking for buyers immediately I'm not doesn't mean I'm looking for sells what I want to do is is just wait for price action to develop it further by taking that Asian low lovely reaction Can we, oh, should we go all chart view, not to lose perspective here. Are we gonna get stuck in this blue zone again? So that's a break of luck. I wanted to, I'm watching to see if it starts breaking resistances and then creating these supports. At the moment, we're just going down. I see clues of it starting to go up.
five minute came to a close. Close nice. Dunder Wickfield. Can we just get a little bit more of a push away from this zone? So what I, I like, I like the push. I'm still not convinced about this resistance just yet. We're getting close to the reversal time, 8.45. Yeah, so I'm looking, I'm gonna, I'm hoping this gonna pull back and then start to push up again from here. I really like this zone. Check the news just, just real quick. See if there's anything that's come up. What was that, Rob? Looks like it's gonna push right up. idea for UK 100. I wonder if that pushed down into that zone. This is my buy limit area, 7296. We'll talk about that one later. Yeah, it's looking promising. We broke that. We broke this little resistance here now. So mm. I'm hoping I can get this. So what I want something to do is is come back, but. I want to. I want to see pullback, and I want to see price stalling in this in this zone, hesitating, creating doji, throwing wicks, rejects and wicks, and then starting to break highs again. Then I'll look for the upside, and then say this London came back, swept the Asian low, and then pushed bullish. Well, I'm going to grab coffee so I can just give it a little bit more time for it to play out, and hopefully we get that 8:45 reversal. Um, looking forward to having enough on the count leave runners. Oh, you get you're doing micros of it, is it? This because you start in that concept trading, is it? Oh wait, I can't talk about. It. Um, yeah, I won't talk about. It. That's um, you're on the small account, isn't it? It's the level one rather. Was that zero point zero one? You got it before it can start allowing the highs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. After that boo boo that I made on the prop account, I've, I've dialed the risk back. <laughs> Just doing small ones to get get some buffer before I can go hard. I'm gonna get a coffee. Hopefully, this can come back in that time. So, I'll be 
Back in five minutes. Take a cap today, please, mate. <clears throat> Alright, so if this is the start of the move back up after the objective was taken of the Asian low maybe this is going to be the shallow pullback now so we might not get it might not come back all the way to here so late entry in this case could be looking for lower time frame we've already pretty low time frame rejections here but more or less is going to be if we can get something closing back above here to then continue back up and hopefully we get that closed back up after having done a little pullback so that's the idea now the question is is can we get a deep pullback or if it's going to be a shallow pullback then my buyer zone i don't really want to take the buyers underneath price because the structure is still more or less to the downside but we've already broken these highs we haven't closed but if we can close above here then with a little wick breaking the high then that would be a candidate for a late entry clean candles to the left at least 30 pips to the top of the london high um 
nearly 50 pips to the euro high. So this would be the safer play. Waiting for this and I will wait for this. If we can get something respecting these lows and giving um, a retest of this candle body and then starting to break back up again, then this would be a high risk reward. Because it's lower lower risk, lower, lower, um, but yeah, better RR to go back up here. But you've got some, we've got problems along the way with it doing this. This five minute candle opening of no top wick, that's a good sign though. That price will at least revisit this candle. But no, no limit orders. Uh, Dan, if you, if you took that sell limit on what caused the higher time frame break, yeah, that would have given you a good 20, 30 pips. Depends on your bias, um, but the structure is actually really, really nice. Like they've been some clean moves. The sell, the initial sell, that was beautiful. The initial reaction from here was really nice. Where I got in was shite. <laughs> but taking age from Asian low, pretty nice. Taking sell limit from what caused the hot, the like Asian session break. You know, is giving you some good pips. So like, there's been some nice trades, nice nice entries. The before beforehand, this was this one here was even like I love that move up. So like, if we look at if you look at the charts objectively and never get so invested in the result that it gives those really negative emotions, then you can really see like the beauty in the price action and the opportunity that there was rather than being like, oh, I took a loss, now I've got to get that back and I've got to, you know, you start getting into that emotional roller coaster. But the entries are here. Got to stay calm. So retesting that 15 minute so we did do the retest because I took a loss on, on I'm, I'm square again square again for the day so I've just gone back to being conservative for the entry so I don't want to end up a negative day I don't want to have one win two losses so I want to make sure that this gives me a lot of confirmation so I'm not taking the me personally I'm not taking the anticipation entry if you want to take if you want to take the anticipation entry you know if it's my own if it's if it's not proper count I'm more aggressive I'm proper count bloody go into a shell Uh, what happens when you lose money on prop firms? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you lose your what, your little deposit. It's more the challenge, you know. It's um, if you make like, because if you make money, you make money. If you lose money, even if it's a demo account, if if you lose money, and you lose like it's it's money that you there's potential. So, I'll see you, Al. Yeah, my personal account. I don't care. I couldn't care less. Cause I don't, I don't keep a whole lot in my, my personal account. So I will risk, you know, a bit more on it because I'm, I'm quite happy that I'd like, I'll do regular withdrawals and just, just keep it really low. Surely props on their brand isn't? No, the track, the conditions that Dan, the conditions aren't good on a, like aren't as good on a prop account as your own personal account. Like if you, so the prop account challenge doing here with trading nut is um, it's a 25k US account but like it's not like you can trade that 25k you can only you can only risk 4% of it so if I take like I say I'm only risking you know I'm using fixed lots but the trades work out to be like 0.2% just because I did a mistake last 
last week where I opened up a 4% risk trade <laughs> and then blew the account straight away because it, with the copy trader, it was a winning trade as well. It was a great trade on my personal account, but the copy trader, I just made a mistake and then the difference in the prop account and my personal account, the lot size is the difference. So I executed 10 times the lot size for the prop account. <laughs> on, on the, didn't like it. So, um, yeah, so but the personal account was just a normal trade. But the but the prop account, because of the way they'd calculated the lots, it was um, yeah, it was ten times too big. So it just I'm I'm surprised it got in within the margin because the margin their leverage is pretty low. It must have just snuck it in, but it was an instant instant um, violation. Even though even though I never hit like max drawdown, it was just that four percent limit for the day. And it um, just because it went <laughs> so crazy, man. Anyway, like I, my, I was only watching my personal account because I was having like connection issues, latency. The broker was freezing, so I thought I'd manage this from a personal. And that like learned, learned pretty quickly. Don't do that, especially distracted with a kid, like a baby crying and stuff. So. I wouldn't have had that problem if it was my personal account because yeah, I just opened up a 4% risk trade by mistake, which was a good trade. Everything actually won, but because it was a prop account, that was a violation. So, you know, you, you lose that account straight away. So I think, I think prop firms, they're a good way to get ahead if you can trade reliably with and manage your risk, but there's, you don't get as good latency. You don't get, the slippage is a real real issue. Take your money from the prop accounts and fund your personal account as soon as you can. All right, so we've got the little retest. So we've got the little resistance. We're continuously making these lower highs in closing prices, but we've got a higher low potential. So if we can start to break some of these highs, then, then it looks like we're, we're good for the way up again. We got six minutes for the stream though, left. And Paulo, you're looking at 14808, huh? The London fix. Right here, this candle. This candle give, gave you the London fix. Can this be a rejection week again? Our candle's not closing very nice, but we have swept a lot of this liquidity. Indeed, it is too, Tom. Yeah, watching that. Be nice if these these candles, these three candles here, are forming. If this one can close bullish, then these are rejection wicks. Add an area of liquidity underneath this Asian low. But because there's so much pressure to the downside, it's taking its time for the sellers, the buyers to change over.
Okay, so it did close. Let's see what this next one can do. All right, so I guess YouTube guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the end now. We're at nine o'clock. What I'm looking for, for, safe for a safe trade, I'm waiting for this area to be closed above. Once that's happening, any wick down breaking the high again, I'm I'm looking for it to then start pushing up clean candles. Hopefully, we can take out the London high, take out this Euro high, and then push up into this green zone. I don't think we're going to trend too much to the downside. Well, we could, but I think with FOMC, I think more or less we'll get we'll stay contained within a range, and I think this is more or less going to just be a fake out. But I don't want to, like, ideally we'd be buying as close to the support as possible. But I think in terms of like a range, I, I think this is a I think this is a safe area. Just wait for something to close above here. Set an alert at that point. You know, and just wait for wait for something to close. I think um, you don't want to get caught trying to like buy low, sell highs, that kind of thing, when we've got very very heavy news day for tonight. Cool. All right, guys. Well, YouTube guys, I will um, I will see you guys. There's no stream tomorrow, but I'll see you guys on Friday for the YouTube ones. Alrighty. So take care. Zoom people, stay on. We're, we're continuing. We'll watch this. Okay. All right. See you guys. See you, Jeffrey. Cool. See you, Beata. <laughs>